Now it's my pleasure to introduce what I, I do believe is a new industrial partner with the air community, but we look forward to further interactions and that's Omniscope and we have um, Holger Hain <laughs> to tell us about Omniscope. Well, good afternoon, my name is Holger Hain, right? <laughs> um, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to talk after, after Illumina, what an honor. And it's a pleasure to celebrate these days the, the global launch of Omniscope. And I can't think, obviously, of a better society and venue uh, to kick this off to, together with you all together. Um, for this talk, I would like to use the next 10 minutes to go through a question of how many cells are needed to do immunity tracing using air sequencing. Um, so here, as a disclaimer, we, we are very far from having a, a clear answer. Uh, but we claim to have a technology that would enable us and you as a community to come to an answer closer and closer. So today I would like to tell you a story about 1 million cells. 1 million cells for, sampled from a scientific co-founder of a Spanish biotech firm uh, over the last two years again and again while his immune system was fighting uh, through a pandemic uh, with re uh, repeated vaccination, repeated infection events. And we thought this sample set would be the ideal one to test the scale and the power of our new uh, T cell sequencing technology, OST. So, OST is our uh, TCR sequencing technology for single cells that can be scaled up to 1 million cells per sample. And really, counting 1 million cells allowed us in this specific data set to track immunity uh, over different events like vaccination and infection over time. And I invite you, I think you have barcodes on the table, uh, to look at the data set yourself. So, we are open today our immune portal where you can browse the data, you can download our data sets. So those are all free to the community. And that gives you a, a sense why scale is important and why 1 million cells are important to track immunity over time. But let me also visualize it for you here. So on the left, uh, you have chronotype sizes um, pre COVID-19 and after COVID-19 infection in uh, January, 2021. So what we've highlighted in, in black are those clones that are uh, specifically expanded after the infection event in January, in gray, those that are expanded from pre-existing memory cells. And please have a specific eye on the red clone while we now go through the next 12 months of, of profiling. So we have, in total, we have six different time points. So on, on, the, on the right, we have now the same uh, color scheme with the, those clones induced after infection. But now we com uh, compare post-infection against post-vaccination six months later, so in June 2021. And as you can see, there are very similar expansion profiles pointing to us that the cellular immunity was conserved over time. But please also look at the, the, the red clone again, which was boosted after the vaccination event. And we can go further in time. So this is now after reinfection, after boostering, a total of 12 months after the first infection events. Here again, the clones are, uh, show a similar expansion profile as they had been 12 months ago. Our red clone entered kind of the the clonal immunity to SARS-CoV-2 of our biotech co-founder, really pointing to us that we can use our technology at scale to track immunity over time and to kind of detect uh, immunity related to SARS-CoV-2. I can tell you this is not the case if we downsample our 1 million cells to 100,000 cells or even 10,000 cells, so kind of standard scales for bulk RNA sequencing or single cell sequencing technologies where we completely lose this overlap between time points and we completely lose the ability to track immunity over time. This can also be displayed over all six time points together. So here we have again the same color code. So the grayish uh, clones induced after the infection and our red clone that was induced after infection boosted with the vaccination event and then entered our stable clonal immunity over time. Then we're interested about the complexity of the TCRs or T-cell clones uh, induced after vaccination and infection and um, computed like simil similarity networks where cells that are more closer to this network or more in center to these networks to more connected TCR or more similar TCR sequences. And we had a specific um, interest in our clones induced after infection or vaccination. And to our surprise, most of them were showed very unique TCR sequences. But when we then zoomed into the more connected um, TCR sequences, 
especially after vaccination, we found a few TCR sequences similar or connected within the communities, pointing to potential common targets. Uh, in this case, the, the spike protein of, of SARS-CoV-2. For the sake of time, I'll quickly switch to another application scenario where scale really makes a difference. So here we look at the immunotherapy mouse model of colorectal cancer, uh, colorectal cancer um, uh, on immunotherapy. And we were particularly interested if, if we can use the blood as a life tracking tool for immunotherapy. This has been initially tested how much of the T cell clones amplified in the, T -cell, uh, in the tumor mark environment are, rep are represented in the blood if you go very deep with OST technology. So here in red, you see T cell clones from the blood in blue, those that were isolated from the tumor mark environment and in the dense area, those T cell clones that are overlapping, right? So, and the more we increased our kind of threshold, how much the clone is amplified within the tumor mark environment, so putatively tumor reactive, the more overlap we found. So we started already with 50%, so very high overlap, but then we zoom to clones that are abundant in more than like two or four copies, greater than four copies, we find an overlap of more than 77% of clonotypes represented in the tumor mark environment in the blood, really pointing to us to the fact that we can use the blood as surrogate for immunotherapy success life tracking. So this was the first uh, requirement, but then we were testing how dynamic, uh, how good are we in kind of estimating the clonotype size and are we able to track uh, clonotype size dynamics throughout therapy. So we were basically plotting the clonotype size between what we observed in the microenvironment against those that we observed in the blood. And we found kind of a perfect correlation, um, again, highlighting for us that if we can use, uh, uh, that we can use the mouse, uh, the mouse blood in this case, as a live tracking tool for immunotherapy success. So clones that are amplifying in the tumor microenvironment, we would also detect them to be amplified in the blood. Again, when we downsampled that, Data set to 100,000 cells, 50,000 cells, 10,000 cells, you completely lose most of the overlap and you lose completely this dynamic range of, of clonotype tracking from the tumor mark environment in the blood. For those who are interested in, uh, interested in, uh, in CAR T design, so our essay provides a full length VDJ information and also alpha beta pairing um, that then can be used as a straightforward input to cloned TCR sequences for, for cell therapy. So all the data I talked about is now available as a data release uh, free to the air community. Um, so more than 8 million cells sampled across six time points from our biotech co-founder and the immunotherapy mouse model um, for treated and untreated mice. To access the portal, you can scan the, the barcodes that you have on the table, visit us at the booth, visit our webpage, uh, as, as advised by our scientific um, advisor, Victor Greif, our data is obviously in, in air format um, and can be downloaded directly or browsed in the immune portal um, through different application scenarios uh, with the, uh, um, supported by Jupyter Notebooks. So scan those barcodes here on the left, you have access to the immune portal. Uh, on the right, you have um, uh, um, um, an abstract competition to, to win free access to, to OST sequencing profiles for your own sample. Just as a summary, so our OST sequencing platform sequences more than uh, 1 million T cells per sample that allows you to very accurately and precise identify clonal amplification events a must for uh, clonal tracing uh, over time, but also an ideal input for any machine learning tool. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank our wonderful team uh, here in Santiago, everyone sitting at home. And yeah, thank you for your attention.